Welcome to Going Green, our weekly feature. Consumers have been told that they need to look at menus carefully to make sure that they're not being served fish that are red listed by the WWF Southern African Sustainable Seafood Initiative. For more on this, I'm joined by Pavitre Pillay. She's the head of the WWF SASE program. She joins me via Skype. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Talk to us about what this list actually is. Thank you very much for having me. Well, the SASE list, which stands for the Southern African Sustainable Seafood Initiative, is actually a very easy traffic light system to get consumers to make very smart choices when they're choosing seafood. So it's, uh, it's, it's a sustainable, an ecological sustainability rating. It puts the power in the hands of the consumer. And how it works is that we, uh, we scientifically assess all the species that are found on our market. And we look at things like, you know, if the species is well managed, stock is doing well in the oceans, and if there's some kind of ecosystem effects of that fishery. And then based on categories, we actually rate this red, orange, or green, and that's where the traffic light comes. So green means these are healthy stock, the stock is well managed, the, the species does well under fishing trick. Orange usually means, you know what, think twice about consuming these. There's a little bit of problem. There's some conservation concerns. They are, their populations are numbers are low. Their abundances are not doing so well. And then finally, there's the red category. And that's the one that asks you to please not buy, not purchase, and not eat. Because these species are of major conservation concern. Their numbers are dwindling, and most of their stock have collapsed mm-hmm. in our ocean. One of the, those um, fish on that red list is Cape salmon. And there's also prawns on that list. Tell us more. Well, Cape salmon, often known as Khalyun, uh, people often call it Cape salmon on restaurant menus. And, and some species of prawns are actually red listed. Prawns are usually red listed because of the way they're fished. They're one of the, the fisheries that have the most impacts on the environment when they actually remove. It's, you know, the statistics are quite frightening. 75% of a prawn cat is usually what we call bycat or fish that is either discarded or not used at all. Gilbeck as well, the species, the numbers are not looking so well. It's not very, not doing very well. Population structure is not very well managed. And as a result, it, the, both these species are South African favorite. And they're very sought after in our market. Mm-hmm. Now, you're expecting consumers to walk into a restaurant and say, you know, are any of, is any of the fish that I'm being served today um, on a red list? What did you say to someone uh, that says that's too much of an effort? I just want to walk into a restaurant and have my fish and not worry about red, yellow and green. I mean, in an ideal situation, you'd actually want the restaurant to only be serving sustainably caught species. So the consumer wouldn't have to worry about checking its sustainability. Unfortunately, that's not the, that's actually not the case. We have a very easy to use tool. It's an app. You literally walk into a restaurant. You can put in the name, even the common name of the species, and it will tell you all the information you need. And the thing is, it's the power of the consumer that holds these retailers and restaurants accountable. You know, as a consumer, you have your voice and you have your wallet. And you can vote with both those things when you're choosing sustainable uh, seafood species. Mm-hmm. How do you get people conscientized enough to care, to want to take time and data to download an app and to make sure that every time they go out, they are conscious of what they're eating and conscious um, of where it's coming from? Well, the important thing is that we use social media all over the platforms. Uh, We find that by communicating and creating awareness and then giving consumers a pathway to act, because everybody wants to be environmentally friendly. People understand the significance that the oceans plays in our lives, in our roles. It's, you know, I, I often tell people it's the lifeline of our planet. Um, David Attenborough very often says, without the blue, there'll be no green. You know, so it's to get very conscious minded, informed consumers to actually keep people accountable. And you'll be surprised. It doesn't take every South African to actually make a difference. A few very conscious Uh, very informed consumers can actually shift major consumption patterns when it comes to being ecologically sustainable. Mm -hmm. There's two terms that keep on popping up when we're discussing fishing and fish that may be in danger, sustainability and traceability. What's the difference? Okay, so sustainability is telling you, is that species from a healthy stock? Is it doing well under current fishing pressure? And is it well managed? Traceability is a completely different concept. 
traceability tells you this is where this fish is from, this is who caught it, and this is how they caught it. So an interesting thing is you can have a species that is caught in a restaurant that is fully traceable but highly unsustainable. Okay. So people use these and think they mean the same thing, but they're actually two very different concepts. You focused a lot in our discussion on the role of consumers, consumers who are aware. What about retailers, restaurateurs, chefs? How do you conscientize them and try and get them on board with what you're trying to achieve? So we're very fortunate in South Africa. We have a very involved retailer program. It's called the WWF SASE Retailer Participation Scheme. And six of the major retailers are part of the scheme. And they've actually made... Uh, basically full commitment to be sustainable when it comes to seafood by a certain timeline. So all the big retailers have made that commitment and they're working towards seafood. When it comes to ships, now if you know anything, ships are the new rock stars of television and celebrity. So we're trying to work very closely with ships. We are on ships training. We try and get them on a newsletter, try to keep them informed. We've gone so far as to give an annual shift Board, which we call the WWF Trailblazer, and we actually recognize that going above it be sustainable. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Pavitra Pile, head of the WWF SASI program, speaking to us there about that initiative.